and welcome to another episode of Happy Mum, Happy Baby, the podcast. Uh, so today's guest, well, she's kind of made this whole series possible, really, because she sponsored it with her amazing brand, Peanut. It is the co-founder and CEO, Michelle Kennedy. Hello. <laughs> Hi, how Hi. are you? I'm all right, thanks. How are you? I feel good. I feel very excited today. I'm not sure why. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm no, like it's blushing. It's really exciting. <laughs> And you listen to podcasts a lot. You listen to all the, the time. I have I have terrible insomnia. I'm a I'm a really bad sleeper, and so podcasts are genuinely the only way I can kind of relax and turn my brain off and switch yeah. off. So I am an avid listener. <laughs> I Super also fan. think that with podcasts as well, for me, when I'm whenever I'm in sort of mum mode, being able to do a school run or whatever, and having voices in my head that are adults. It's like having a conversation, but not. It's so important. Actually, When I, before anything to do with Peanut, and when I was kind of really, really lonely at that kind of my first baby, I started listening to Serial. Do you remember oh, that yeah. podcast? I've not, never listened to it, but it's quite... Gee, yeah, it's is amazing. It, quite dark? it is gonna quite dark, okay. not going to not gonna <laughs> lie. But it is great because I needed to hear an adult voice yeah. and I needed to have... It, it just made me feel like there were people around me, even though it was one Sarah Koenig but it was it was important to me so I, I really believe in the power of kind of spoken word and being able to listen to people's conversations it's so good I think otherwise you're just in baby talk and everything shuts down a little that's bit. right and you actually weirdly start having conversations in your own head that will never ever come to fruition so at least to be able to hear someone else's real conversations very important <laughs> it is it is I can't talk to the mirror anymore I need to actually talk to people yeah um what was your childhood like Oh, my childhood. Um, it was it was cool. It was fine. I grew up in Peterborough. Um, my um, dad is an electrician, so he was always like up at four, out the door at four thirty. Like very, very kind of hardworking work ethic. Um, Mum was always juggling jobs around me, so um, like part time work effectively while I was at school and then going off to do whatever it was ballet or something and she would kind of juggle things around me um it was a bit weird mum and dad weren't together so but we lived in somewhat of an unconventional way um they we all lived in the same house just leading Were they separate ever lives together or N- not from when i was like quite young right um so yeah quite unconventional in many ways but you know it was it's all i knew but i had a like the best group of friends they're still my friends now we all live in London together and um I I wouldn't change any of that I'm seeing them all on on Thursday night my mum was very very education you must work hard I was definitely very geeky at school and that was okay with me because again it made mum happy which got her off my back my (laughs) mum's like a very strong Irish woman and you just don't mess with her so if she told you to work hard you you work hard um and that was and that was it that was life and I I loved it and then um I moved to London and um it was like a whole new world like everything was different here yeah of course how long ago did you move to London? So I actually trained in Newcastle. So after uni, I went to Newcastle. I lived up in Newcastle for ages where everyone's gorgeous and so sweet and so nice. Moved down to London. No one spoke to me. I was like, why does no one talk to nice each other? Accent. They don't talk to anyone. I was, remember smiling at someone on the tube and literally they turned away and I was like, wow, must remember not to smile at anyone that I don't know. Um, whereas on the metro, on the metro, um, everyone would smile at you. So anyway, that was um, a totally different. But I moved down to London when I was 24. Mm-hmm. I'm 37 today. So anyway. Happy that, birthday. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> so um, a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and what did you always think about starting a family? Was that always something that you kind of thought was going to be in the future? Yeah, really good question. Actually, not so much. I mean, I wouldn't have ever described myself as very maternal. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I definitely didn't ever have that feeling of I really want to like jump in and, and have babies. I, I was kind of scared of children um, a little bit, to be honest. What about them scared you? Well, I'm an only child. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. I don't have kind of, I didn't grow up with like little ones around me. Like my mum's family were mostly in Ireland. My dad's family were mostly in Scotland. So it wasn't like I had cousins around me or what have you. Like the people who were around me were my friends and yeah. my peers. Um, so I didn't really know that world necessarily. Um, and so there was a long time where I just, I didn't really think about it. I really super focused on my career. 
thanks, mum. <laughs> so that was like the one thing that I was really absolute about. But I wasn't really thinking about children. And and then um, when I had Finn, I, everything changed, of course. And now I'm obsessed. I could be at an <laughs> event and I, all I'm doing is taking pictures of the baby. So everyone's like, hi. <laughs> That's not okay, Michelle. That's what, now I love them, and it's was so strange. Was it meeting Rich that changed your like outlook on it? Yeah, I don't know. I think so. I think there was that moment where I was with him, and I was like, It'd "Be great if we had our own little person together." Um, Rich has got kids, like big kids. Okay. So there, there was probably that moment where it was like maybe it would be nice for us to have a baby. Um, but apart from that, I don't know how much of it was maybe just this is what you do. Yeah. You get married and you have a baby. And and there might have been an element of that. Um, because it's all anyone ever asks you. If you well, As soon as you're, well, if you're single, it's like, when are you going to get a boyfriend? Yeah. Then you have a boyfriend, it's like, when are you going to get married? Then you get married, it's like, when are you going to have a baby? Then you have one, it's like, when are you going to have another one? That's exactly it. And are you done? <laughs> That's all I get now. I've got so. two. Are you done? <laughs> so I mean, I I, Is anyone going to ask us about the menopause? Or is I'm, that just a thing that no one asks? Well, no one talks about yeah. that. Mm. Let's be honest. Yeah. We should start talking about that, actually. Yeah. But um, there, there were just, I suppose there was an element of this is the way my life will go now. And this yeah. is kind of how it's written. Um, and then it happened and I would never, ever, 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 ever change it. But at that time, you know, it was hard for me as well. I just probably got to a place in my career where I felt very much like this is good. And I, I know what, what I'm doing. What position were you in? When... So I was um, general counsel at Badoo, which is a big dating platform. So I was... A, I was um, I was kind of the head lawyer and kind of had built out all the teams and I, I loved it. Um, I'm the only woman who was like in the leadership team and I, I really, really loved it. And then I got pregnant and everyone was like, she's going to be a mum. You know, and it was quite like awkward. It's all these young tech bros and me going to be a mum. And it, everything changed a little bit, but there was so much within that that changed that is, you know, I would, couldn't, I could never imagine life without it now. But then going from that sort of career woman and then finding yourself pregnant and then suddenly, I, in pregnancy even, you're kind of out of control of what's happening to your body. It's very, very hard. In my, I mean, my pregnancy with Finn in hindsight was actually very, very easy and I was very lucky and I would never, ever moan about it having had the pregnancy with Nula, which was horrific. Really? So I can never, ever, like, Finn was very easy. when I can remember in, your um, pregnancy <gasps> post, actually. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Like, I was so ill with Nula pretty much for the whole time. It was oh, just God. awful. But with Finn, I actually felt good. I felt yeah. fine. Um, and I think that you're coming to terms with so many things and like changes in your body and you are more tired. You can't do everything mm. you want to. But there was one day I was walking through Soho. I was using a BlackBerry, cool, woman in tech. <laughs> and I was typing on my BlackBerry and I fell over. There was a pot in the road and I fell over, bump fur, <gasps> and I couldn't get up. I was very pregnant. I mean, it was very stupid. Yeah. And I had, I was crying. Crying. I had to call someone from my office to come and get me. And then I had to ask this hairdresser who was standing outside having a smoke to help me up because I couldn't stand up. Oh I was my very... God. And it was a big wake up call. I basically had to wear the robo boot, you know, when you do your ankle in. Oh, yeah. For the last like three weeks of my pregnancy. And there was a debate about whether I would have to wear it during birth. Oh, which I did my say. God. But that, that was a real like wake up call where I was like, stop it. You're being selfish. And also, this is embarrassing because now you're pregnant with a robo boot. I had a robo boot in my, in my third pregnancy. How I so awful did. Yeah. is it? <laughs> so embarrassing. You're already waddling and now you've got like the robo waddle. I mean, it's the whole thing was just awful. So that was not ideal. Um, and then he came and. and what was everything. your labour like? Well, I didn't have labour because I had an emergency C section. Oh, the did end. you? He didn't engage. Oh. So um, he was massive. Like Finn was just under ten pounds, so he was a really big boy, and he wasn't engaging. And I'd done acupuncture. I was late, and I'd done acupuncture. I'd done everything, and I sat down, and the consultant was like, "I think this isn't going to happen for you, like in the way that you have planned out." Yeah. And so that was it. I had an emergency C later that. How day. did you feel? Because some people are like that's fine, whatever, you know, get the baby out, and some people it weighs heavily. I felt really rubbish. Felt very much like I'd failed. Felt really hard. Um, it was hard. Breastfeeding was hard when mm -hmm. he arrived and whether that's because of, you know, the birth as well. And um, it it all felt very, very challenging because at each step it felt like got that wrong. 
I got that wrong. I didn't get it right. And it's so funny because when I had Nula, I planned my C-section because I wasn't <laughs> going to go through that again. She popped out. That was all very nice. I popped her on the boob. I was very chilled out. So it is this like unbelievable pressure that we put on ourselves to do what we think is right and it's there is no right like, but also this time around you would have had you've had the experience of talking to so many more mums absolutely and understanding that actually there is no right way and we're all like the judgment that we feel is mostly on ourselves that's like it. from ourselves but 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 also now there are people like you who do podcasts like this where we talk about things mm. that, that that wasn't happening when yeah. i had finn there was a different conversation you know now you know there is no reason that any woman should feel on her own or mm-hmm. she should feel like she's the only woman who's experienced something or she should feel like she's a bad mom or doing things wrong because she only has to you know turn on her podcast and listen to this or to read something online or to to go and speak to other women to find out she's not on her own yeah and I think you know seven years ago I didn't I didn't have that I I very much felt like there was a different expectation of women and I put an unrealistic one on myself for sure how did you find those first few weeks just awful terrifying um your body is all over the place my milk didn't come in for ages so i just had these like little rock hard bullets for ages oh, it may hurt so, so much. painful got mastitis that wasn't ideal mm-hmm. finn did not want to latch not great um and it was christmas time so we had lots and lots and lots of visitors coming around because it was christmas as well and then january came everyone disappeared and went back to work it was very dark and gray and cold and i was like wow it's just me and this tiny dude and he doesn't do a huge amount he didn't sleep very well um and it was extremely isolating and, mm. and very very hard and it's that massive gear change as well isn't it it's like you're in london every day you're boshing it you're in your career you're you've got a team under you and they listen to what you say and then all of a sudden you're at home you're on your own it's bleak outside the baby will cry and they won't listen to a single word you say because they don't get it you don't understand them there's a lack of communication and it feels massively overwhelming to try and even get out of the house feels a cross between I really want to do it and I'm terrified to go out of the house because what if he cries or yeah. what if I didn't bring the right things with me or like there, there were so many challenges to doing that. I remember one day um, I used to try and set myself a get to Starbucks. If I can get to Starbucks, everything will be OK that day. I'm mm-hmm. like a weirdly superstitious person. So that would be my <laughs> like test. That. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I can get to Starbucks today, it will be a good day. So um, I remember getting to Starbucks one day and there was an old lady in front of me in the queue And Finn started crying and she was like, I think someone's hungry. And I just burst into tears because actually I really wanted my coffee. right? (laughs) And I really, really was like so desperate to have that coffee. And I was tired and I was going to sit down and feed him. Of course I was, but I just wanted to get my coffee and then do it. And I just felt horribly judged. And Did she see you cry? Yes, but I think she just probably thought, you know. What's up with her? I mean, it was quite extraordinary um, for this <laughs> brave woman. Just... <laughs> it's it's a not... funny thing as well, isn't it? Because I think I remember people saying things like that or to their children. So it's that almost that passive comment that happens. <gasps> oh, the baby's tired or, you know, oh, or, you know, or needs a feed. And you're just like, no, is it? Is it? Is that right? I don't know. Do you know my baby how more than me? Know? And that was the thing. I felt like, how did she know that Finley was actually needing that? How did she know better than I did? Because I actually didn't know why he was crying at that point. I was actually just going to shove the boob in and hope for the best. Like I didn't know that that's what it was. So for actually for her to be like, someone's hungry. I was like, oh god. It's like everyone knows better than than me at this. Yeah. And um, actually, I think at that point, I really and it's a horrible thing to say, and I can say it now because. I would give anything to spend all day every day with him and just sniff his little neck and annoy him. But um, at the time, I couldn't wait to get back to work because I felt like at least I know what I'm doing there. I'm good at that and I'm not good at this. And maybe I'm just not maternal. That's what kept going on in my head. Maybe I'm just not a mummy person and I'm just there will be people who are better and I'd call my mum. Can you come down and help me? And so there was a lot of that. Um, And it actually, you know, it took until... Probably Finn was like five and a half, six months for us to really get into our swing of we knew each other. I was the only one who could settle in then. And then we were like with each other. But that took a long time. That was hard. Yeah. And I think it's those feelings are so normal. Yeah. And so many people have them. Yeah. But it's only when people start vocalising that you kind of realise that you're not on your own. Because in that moment, they feel 
so massive. And, you know, we talk a lot about maternal mental health. Thankfully, it's becoming more and more. And and about the amount of mums who, you know, commit suicide yeah. from feeling massively overwhelmed yeah. and stuff. And you kind of like, if, if these conversations existed, then that wouldn't be, that they would feel comforted. Because even I, I now, I've got three boys and I feel so overwhelmed at times, just being like, why is no one listening? Why can't I do this? Yeah, it's so hard. I, I can't say it enough. If there is a moment where you feel like you're despairing or it's too hard or you're crying or mm. whatever it might be in that moment, and we've all been there, we all know what it feels like. There is nothing wrong, firstly, with putting the baby in the cot and going and get a cup of tea. Yeah. Nothing will happen to the baby. And it, like they might cry and cry and cry, but just if you just need that respite for two minutes, three, go and pee, whatever yeah. it is, it's okay. Like nothing will happen. And um, there's so much pressure to to be this perfect mom. There is noth nothing is perfect. So that is one thing. And the, the other thing is, please be brave and tell someone mm -hmm. how you feel because I like I guarantee they would have felt it too. Um, and it is so hard, you know, that the the amount of um, expectation that we have on ourselves is so damaging and it will damage your relationship with your baby because you start to resent them at certain mm. points or feel frustrated by them. And ultimately, you are everything to them. Yeah. And to them, you are perfect. I, th I always find it amazing how you can have the best day and then one thing like one meltdown can bring the whole day down oh. in the same way you can have a day that's full of meltdowns and full of you know lock, being at loggerheads and stuff and then just that one beautiful kiss before bedtime that's or right. that one little giggle and then that flips the day around anything all of those moments you have to try and remember them as well because mm. um i think i'm a person who thinks a I overthink everything a lot. So there is I have a tendency to think about okay so what did what happened there and did I deal with that thing right did that person say that like I I do over analyze everything and you can't over analyze with these babies <laughs> like <laughs> everything can change within an hour mm -hmm. and and I, I think I fell into it very much with Finn where I'd overanalyze everything. Is he okay? Was that normal? Is he happy? That that feels like maybe that's a sign of something else. And I really did do that a lot. Um, and I have to say with Nula, like motherhood has been so different for me this time round. And partly because I've got Finley and he's amazing and just so mm, edible <laughs> but but secondly because I'm not questioning it with Nula because she has to be her own little person and mm -hmm. that means that sometimes she cries and there isn't really a reason for it and that's okay and I'm not going to stress out about it and if someone tells me in Starbucks that she looks hungry <laughs> I'm just going to smile politely and, and carry on <laughs> and get my coffee because I don't care. Uh, I think I there know is a thing there. though that most of us who have like have two or three children will look back to ourselves with the single child and go why did I find that so hard but then I also understand it because it was all so new and everything was overwhelming and I think it did come at a time where you had to be perfect and you had to present everything as perfect because that's where this came from because I was just like why is everyone else getting it right and I'm not and you're getting it wrong and that's yep. the worst thing like that feeling of failure there there is no failure mm. and I think that um ultimately we have to think about, you know, when you think back to aspects of your own childhood, was it perfect? Of course it wasn't perfect, but it was your childhood and it's all you knew. So yeah. for you, that that was that was life, that was everything. And um, my mum would sometimes look at me with how I was behaving with Finn, kind of partly like observing me, <laughs> like kind of fascinated by this obsession that I would have with him or, or how I wanted things to be. And she, the amount of time she used to say, will you relax? <laughs> that was her favourite, will you relax? Um, her favourite expression. And I didn't relax right. for a long time. And it meant that there were many aspects of his early like months that I didn't enjoy mm -hmm. and you're meant to be able to enjoy this too yeah it sucks when you're tired and you're bored because you haven't spoken to an adult all day or you're kind of worried sick or whatever it might be. all of those things are really really hard but they're also meant to be really enjoyable yeah. and it's you're allowed to feel ups and downs and yeah. neither of those are wrong how do you juggle it <laughs> like <laughs> this <laughs> <laughs> Quite clearly, <laughs> really badly, like a zoo. Um, it is, I mean, it's just, it's so, it makes me cringe. It, it's so hard all the time. And I told, 
overthinker. Yeah. So I might drop Finn at school. So generally speaking, I don't do drop off. So I stay with New in the mornings. Rich drops Finn. Um, he circles back. I pop New down for her nap. Our nanny arrives and I go to work. So right. that's like the routine every morning. So, you know, you start at like just after six and you get everyone up and you like get everyone fed, dress for school, whatever. That's all fine. And I'm trying to do all of those things. And then occasionally we'll switch it so that I do do drop off for whatever reason. Maybe I'm trying to get to a meeting early or whatever it is. And a mum might make a comment and she might mean very genuinely, we don't see you often because it's true. They don't see me often because I'm with New in the morning. But it's like a razor yeah. or a dagger. Better word, dagger. <laughs> um, and then you think about it for the rest of the day. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm an absent mum. I have to say, I bumped into Angela Scanlon the other day. Yeah. And uh, and we had a great chat. This is going to be third-hand information. It's going to be naff. But she was talking about, she's seen this post uh, about... Glass and plastic balls. And we always think when you're, when you're a mum, glass balls are family, plastic balls are work. So plastic balls, if you're juggling, don't worry about the plastic balls if they fall, it doesn't matter. The glass balls are the family and they're the ones that matter. But actually, you've got glass balls in work and family <gasps> yeah. and you've got plastic balls in each. And uh, as you're juggling, you've got to realise that there are some plastic balls in the family and they're fine if they fall. A drop off, it's fine, it's plastic. School nativity, that's glass. Very good. I love it. Very good. So we're all juggling and actually it doesn't matter. Like you've, you've got to pick where the ball, the plastic balls drop from, which pile, but really, everything has really its priority. Smart. I like that. I like that a lot. I like I mean, that a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. I haven't seen the original post, but that's what I've taken a book that, from That's Angela. excellent. I shall now pass that off as my own later today, <laughs> that wisdom, when I pass that on. If you're a peanut later, I'll be like, so listen, plastic balls. Um, so uh, look... You don't juggle it, do you? You just, or you try your best to juggle it. And mm. sometimes it's okay, and sometimes it's not. And I suppose it's just about being okay with the fact that sometimes you're good and sometimes you're less good. Do you switch either off? You know, the career and the family—they're both running side by side. Mm. Do you? Are you ever able to switch one off? Um, no, mm. I don't know how to do that. Actually, I'm not sure. I mean, there are times that. You know, I can see stuff that's happening at work mm -hmm. and I, I'm distracted by it. I can see it on my phone. And it's giving me that like the heartbeat and I'm getting a bit like starting to obsess me. I need to just check it to check that the world isn't on fire or nothing's happening or um, and sometimes you can check it and then it's fine and you can get on with things. And sometimes you check it and it's totally distracting. Mm -hmm. um, I think that... For a while, I had to do the putting my phone in a different room yeah. because it was really genuinely having a very detrimental impact, not just on my sleeping, although it was, but also on my relationship with Rich. Like He would be talking to me and I was partially listening, par partially on <laughs> Slack, partially emailing. It's just rude. And actually, if he was doing it, I'd be furious. Mm. Um, so we, we did have to do that and I am getting better. I'm not p perfect at it. Um, and the one thing I am very clear on, actually, is I don't like using the phone with the kids. Yeah, because I'm the same. Because they obsess over what I'm doing on mm -hmm. this little magic box. Like, even Nula's face, she's fascinated because she's like, what's mummy up to? Yeah. So I really try not to use it with them. I usually find that work emails come through about four, half four. When the kids are home, I'm trying to do dinner. Perfect. Tom's not there. Mm. I'm like, oh, so you do have that anxiety of knowing that you've got to get back it's to someone, fair. knowing that actually you can't really do it until seven. Because that's when the that's, kids go down. That's when I'm that's not going to feel guilty for that's, replying. Yeah. But you just have that anxious belly until you can. Well, that's the time. And even last night, um, I got in, I was late. I missed bedtime last night, which was horrible. <sighs> so I was late home from work. And um, so I kind of ran up and gave them both a, both a kiss and ran down. And um, one of Rich's friends popped over to say hi. Well, that's fine. But now I have to be polite. And in my head, I'm thinking, <laughs> I wonder when you're going to go because I need to eat and also got work to do so I'm kind of half smiling half looking at my phone really rude horrible Michelle but rudely kind of like partially checking and then occasionally putting it turning it down and then turning it over and turning it down again and uh so we had a bit of that and then he left and then we ate and I worked downstairs and I went up and Rich was asleep on the sofa and I was like Today was a bad day. I didn't I didn't juggle it right. Mm. Like I I didn't. But today, you know, 
my mum's coming down. Like Finn will want to do birthday cake. Like I have to Aww. make sure. Yeah. So I have to make sure today I'm going to leave the office properly and I'm going to go and do it properly. And um, good days, bad days. Yeah. Though I have to say, I always find that if I'm on my way home, and I know I'm going to get home at 10 to 7. I I have to think, <laughs> do I want to go in? <laughs> been here before <laughs> and, suddenly every, <laughs> and everything's really hyper they don't fall asleep for another hour yeah or do i just hold yeah, back i know that way that i get there at seven they're asleep that's right it's the hard thing isn't it because you want to be i'm a mum and i want to see them and i want to give them kisses but also we've all been there because we know how that evening plans out <laughs> not it's well not good <laughs> not a good one many a time i've been on a call at the bottom of the like driveway like not going in at all. Like, Are those lights off yet? Yeah. yeah, genuinely, <laughs> genuinely, just hovering, watching my phone. Like, feel safe. I'll go for it. <laughs> yep, done that. One thing you have sadly gone through at the moment, uh, recently, is you've lost your mother-in-law. Yes. How have you handled that with with Finley? Losing Pamela has been. I've never lost anyone before. I'm mm. kind of lucky to say. Um, and Pamela was the most extraordinary woman because um, I'm definitely was not the perfect fit for um, Rich's family at all. We're different religions and he's older than me. And uh, we have, he had a, you know, we're, we're just very, very different families. And th there's so many things that don't really make sense, but he and I together make sense. And she always really felt that. Um and she was always just amazing with me and loved me. Yeah. Um, Rich is very or was very, very close to his mum. So we live around the corner from her. And that meant that you she was just all the time. so, so much part of our lives. Mm. You know, every weekend we were together. Um, whether that was because they popped in for Saturday afternoon and they'd stay for bedtime, what have you, babysitting, they'd come round. And as Finley got older, he would go for sleepovers there. And going for a sleepover at Grandma and Grandpa was the most fun because <laughs> basically it just meant Kinder Eggs <laughs> on tap. You just have to go, yeah, it's on your watch. I'm not, I'm not you deal so with it. So much, yeah. so much. And, and brioche, lots of brioche. I'd be like, <laughs> how, how many brioche are we talking? Four? <laughs> Always oh, these big eyes. Four. Um, so, so lots of brioche, lots of kinder, and lots of love and lots of fun. And to not have that, he was. She passed away very suddenly, um, and so she fell very ill on the Thursday. And on the Saturday, Finn was meant to be having a sleepover, and so I was trying to deal with Rich being um, devastated and heartbroken but also Finley kind of saying what's wrong with grandma am I still going for my sleepover will grandpa be there and and you know these very very innocent questions mm. and I did spend some time talking to friends to say you know what's the best way of dealing with this do I tell him that she's ill mm -hmm. and then because we knew where inevitably it was going. So do I discuss the fact that she she is ill and then that she's passed? Or do I wait until she passes and then have the conversation? Um, and you have to do whatever's right for you. Finley's very, very emotionally like intuitive to what's going on. Yeah. Any kid would be when the house is, everyone's, you know, feeling sad and no one's acting normally. Um and also his big brother is back from uni all right. of a sudden and that's strange and um and and amazing but also the his big brother who throws him around the room and tickles him is is not doing that that's you know that's alarm bells as well yeah. why isn't sam doing that so um that was all quite hard and in the end i just decided to tell him that grandma's really really poorly and actually a bad choice of words i said sick right. grandma's really really sick so in Finn, Finn is very literal. <laughs> so that meant sick. Did she eat something bad? What did she eat? Has she got a tummy bug? And there were lots of, and I was, no, <laughs> I'm, more questions. I, I meant poorly, <laughs> but because of what she ate, what did she eat? And, you know, there was a lot of that kind of, um, and then I had to explain. And then when she passed and there's lots of stuff that kind of just pops up mm -hmm. along the way. Is she in the ground though? Will the worms get her? And lots of, and that's quite hard for Rich because every time one of those questions, like the tears were coming down his face. Um, and actually, Sophie, Sophie Solaria, <laughs> goddess of all knowledge, um, said, um, 
you have to be careful about talking about heaven because heaven could be Devon as far as a child right. is concerned. Like grandma's gone to heaven feels like a place that you can go to and, and actually maybe facts are better. Um, and so, and that made sense to me, mm -hmm. particularly given how literal Finn is. So I was like, listen, she's not with us anymore. But if you ever want to talk to her, I feel like she's all around us and you can talk to her whenever you want. Um, and we've got a picture on the coffee table at the moment. And so he's kind of been able to be like, do you want to see my picture, Grandma? <laughs> In that very kind of straightforward way. Um, and so he he is understanding. Questions do pop up. I think it's harder to see Rich's reactions to the questions at the moment because he's yeah. so cut up about it. Um, and, you know, all we can do is keep all of the memories alive, you know. Pamela was the kind of person that if you told her you liked something that she bought you, she bought you 15. <laughs> yep. So we've got a lot of like repeat items in our house. And so, you know, if, if ever there's a repeat, we make a joke, oh, you know, that must be from grandma. So he's very much like, is that a grandma when we've got two pairs of the same shorts or whatever? Um, so we're trying to keep all of those things alive. And I I hope we do a good job. But um, so he remembers because I don't know how much you retain mm. when you're six. Um but it's very sad to me that Nuna won't know her because she was she was amazing. She was yeah. wonderful. It's a funny thing. So my nonna passed away. So Buzz's great uh, great grandma um, a, a couple of years ago now. Uh, but Buzz did have a relationship with her, but he was very young. Right. So it's quite strange. Like so, I I do bring her into conversation. I you know he That's knows nice. that she's not here anymore. Um, but it is that it's that strange thing knowing that actually they won't remember that time. It's quite hard, isn't it? Mm. I, I I think I find that harder than him dealing with the loss because I think he's quite accepting of that. Yeah. Um, because we have tried to be a bit more factual. It's that feeling of I you know, you ache a bit mm. knowing that they might not remember all of the amazing things she did do. And, you know, I tell you one thing that is amazing. Thank goodness we have things like smartphones where you can take a video yeah and it's so instant it's yeah. so easy because I can find him watching videos of us on Christmas day this year you know we all had Christmas together and he'll laugh at them and <laughs> you know the year before when they're doing that pie face game he can see those and they're so instant and yeah. thank goodness we have got that um so there are ways I suppose but he he dealt with it in in an incredible way kids are amazingly resilient it's just hard isn't it because you don't know how to deal with the situation until you're suddenly faced with it and you're like oh, I've, I've got no idea it is so hard and no one tells you you know mm. how to deal with this stuff and um actually i i was reading um on the app about um someone who had lost uh, like the the child's sibling basically she'd lost a child and so trying to explain that to the sibling and and she was saying that she dealt with it immediately the moment it happened don't leave it um don't kind of build up to it you just have to deal with it and uh, how extraordinarily fortunate we are that we had Pamela in our lives at all but that it was a grandparent and not a sibling yeah um so you know there are always degrees to to everything and you have to be thankful I suppose for for the experience that you've had mm. um but yeah, another example of like getting like advice from other yeah. women and, and how and they And also, would feel. I guess, with the app as well, it's it's having people that you trust but are also a bit removed. That's right. Sometimes the element of closeness um, in some elements of conversation is almost too much. Mm. Um, if you want to talk about your partner or a relationship or your sex life or something, your health... And and maybe there is an element to which that's too close to home. To be able to have it with someone who, you know, you know you have something in common with and you might shoot the breeze with, but maybe you're not kind of, you know, going to live in each other's pockets. That's okay. Mm. Um, sometimes you really need that yeah. almost more. Um, because also sometimes, you know, we, we have disagreements or we don't always see eye to eye with the people who are closest to us. So you also need like that sense check for mm. someone to say, yeah, that's normal or, yeah. you know, take a breather. You won't feel like this tomorrow, whatever yeah. it is. Has motherhood surprised you? <gasps> yes. Motherhood's made me so much softer, I think. <laughs> I think I'm really soft these days. Um, I think definitely I was a bit more... Um, I definitely wasn't as empathetic. I've always been a bit of a softie, but at work, no, I was definitely quite, you know, 
I'm going to use the term aggressive because I don't know what the word is, but I was I was focused, and mm-hmm. I was driven, and I, I I really felt very strongly about things, and that was the way it was going to happen. And motherhood definitely made me look at things differently. I'm more patient um, with my team because I'm more patient at home, and mm-hmm. and actually I get much more from that because I like the experience of working with the team. They listen, my team are so much smarter than me, all of them in every way that. Um, being able to have them be patient with me when they're explaining things to me about why it isn't going the way I thought it was or that's not quite the right interpretation, Michelle, whatever it might be. That's patience that I've learned from having the children Mm because we all have the patience of a saint, (laughs) let's be honest. Um, So that has surprised me. um, And I think that um, I'm just a bit more amenable to trying to find the right way to do things um, when perhaps before in my younger years I, I didn't, necessarily care about the right way to do it I cared about getting to the right answer yeah and now I'm much more about the route than the results um and that comes from parenting I think so you you try one way it's not working you know you have to you have to keep changing and so you know if you're shouting at your kid repeatedly because they're not going to do something well obviously that's not right yeah then you have to at the moment we've got a tick reward chart have you yeah if you put your shoes on without mummy having to say it more than twice, <laughs> you do get a tick. So I like it. He's still got twice. Twice. <laughs> he gets a second go because, you know, sometimes he, he can't hear me. <laughs> I didn't hear you, mummy. <laughs> so, okay. So now you get a I second time. I asked the other yeah. night, why don't you listen to me when I'm talking to you when you can hear? Well, sometimes you just say boring things. Oh, wow. Oh, well, okay. Night. <laughs> yeah. Finn actually said to me, it was my voice. Sometimes oh. it's your voice. <laughs> Thanks, kid. <laughs> like I like I grate on him was right. basically what right. he was saying. Sometimes it's your voice. <laughs> oh god. They're, they're so brutal. They are mercenary. They are. They really are. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've recently re- written a book called uh, Letters on Motherhood that's a series of letters on motherhood. If you could write a letter. On motherhood, who would it be to and what would it say? Oh, so it would be to my mum's mum, who I didn't really know very well, my grandma Sarah. Um, So my grandma Sarah was one of 16. Wow. Big Irish Catholic family. Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, sorry. My mum is one of 16, I should say. Oh, so okay. She had oh, 16. My sorry, gosh. I didn't say that right. She yet. had 16 that's, children. That's right. Yeah. So big Irish Catholic yeah. family. And um, so I think... I would just ask her about that. (laughs) What? Um, But also, um, I would like to thank her for whatever she did with my mum because my mum, genuinely, there are so many things I would never have been in a position to do but for my mum. And, you know, some of that's obvious. I be alive and be here. But um, uh, she is so, she's always been so driven for me and, and given me a work ethic and made me try hard um and believed in me and is completely selfless in that way and so um I want to be able to make my children have that and I want to do the same for them so I suppose it would be to thank for that and to say that I'm trying to do the same for uh Finley and Leela. I love that you've gone to the person beyond your mum yeah. Because you could have thanked your mum, but actually you're thanking the woman that made your mum the person that she That's is. That's right, because my my mum won't mind me saying, she will definitely mind me saying, um, <laughs> is is also, you know, none of us are perfect. But she um, she is a force. And um, I don't think you become like that by accident. Yeah. Uh, you know, bef- behind a force is a force, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so I, w- I would love to do that. And also because I, I never had the honour of really knowing her. Yeah. So I end each podcast episode with you answering or finishing three sentences. Yes. Being a mum means? The most unbelievable head-to-toe explosive love. Since having children, I? Never get to drink hot tea. (laughs) So annoying. (laughs) I hate lukewarm tea. It's horrible. The worst. Oh. It's like dishwater. Yeah. Every morning, lukewarm. And then you sip it because you think, oh, and every morning, hey. I think tea is worse than coffee as it well. It is. It's much worse. I Actually, cold coffee, because you can drink I, cold yeah, coffee, yeah, yeah. it's okay. Cold tea, oh, 
and it leaves that taste. Mm, oh. Furry. Awful. Not good. And I'm happy when. I'm with my friends and family and little faces looking at me, even if my voice is annoying to him. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pure delight. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having me. Not at all. And well done on everything that you've created with Peanut. It's, it's amazing to have women speaking and, and reaching out to each other. Thank you. <laughs>